What's up dogs? Let's put the new base model M1 MacBook Air to the test in the Adobe Creative Suite with Lightroom and Premiere Pro. As a follow-up to one of my recent videos, we will run an astrophotography time-lapse, we'll process the photos in Lightroom, and we'll stitch together those photos in Premiere Pro. Knowing how something similar performed on my PC, this is going to be riding the struggle bus a little bit. But we'll put together the clip and I'll play it at the end of the video so you can see the fully rendered 4K output. This will not, this will not be a scientific review, as is my style and there will be no benchmarking tools set up during this video. I'm just going to use this how I normally would, and I'll remark on how it compares to the desktop that I primarily use for my content creation. Because this is the base model with only 256 gigs of storage, I'm going to work from a USB drive on this project, as that's how I'll be working most often. The first step in creating our time lapse is to process all of our individual frames, and that's how we're going to tax Lightroom. Also, OBS is going to be running the entire time, so there's that. When I toss out times for the task completions, keep in mind that we're recording the screen simultaneously. Let's create a new catalog and import the 634 raw photos taken on the Canon RP with the RF 14mm Samyang lens. You can see that they're in, but that Lightroom is still creating the previews. The total elapsed time for the entire input process is 1 minute and 57 seconds. Not great, but not horrific. It is several hundred raw files on the base model. All right, let's edit this bad boy. And I actually edited this first photo earlier, so I'll just speed through this part. We have plenty of time in the future to look at Lightroom editing if you're into that kind of thing, so let me know. Now we have the before and the after. Before, after. Very basic edit, and the sliders were snappy throughout. But here comes the first potential hurdle. Because we want our time lapse to look consistent throughout the duration of the clip, we're going to copy the edits that we've made on this first photo to all the other 600 some photos in the catalog. My PC struggles to do this for longer time lapses. The fans come on, it tries to take off and fly away. I've got some Intel i7 that's two or three years old, 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM, and an RTX 2080 for comparison. Not crazy, but pretty capable. Start to finish, copying these settings across all files took 33 seconds and it's definitely struggling to keep up with the image previews. But again, this is what I expected. Okay, third step, let's export all of these images full res with some normal sharpenings for screens. If we wanted our finished time lapse to be 4K, we could crop these images to 16x9 and export directly at 3840x2160 in Lightroom. Instead, we'll keep them full res so that we can add some subtle movement in our finished clip. Pro tip for you there. Speaking of pros, would you look at that? Cody Wanner just texted through his community group. All right, so exporting looks like it's going to be a bit of a Let's speed this ish up. One hour, 46 minutes, and two seconds to export all of those frames. The MacBook got pretty warm, but it was silent. I'll give it that. Time-wise, this is not ideal. Maybe when Lightroom gets optimized for the new architecture, this will improve. But until then, plan to do another task while you run something like this. Also, the battery life on the M1 Air has been great so far, but you can see that it ripped through the battery during this task, going from 92 to 19%. Step number four, we've got our beautifully edited and exported frames. Let's kick off our Premiere project and stitch them together into our final video file. Forgive me as I work off only one screen here, but we'll drag our images over to import, and that import takes 25 seconds. When making a time lapse, before we drag our media onto our timeline, we want to open the timeline tab in the preferences menu and adjust the still image default duration to be one frame. That way we won't have to adjust the image durations once we've dropped them in. Before I add everything though, I'll just drop in the first frame and check our sequence settings. I'll change the project to 24 frames per second but I'm going to leave the frame size as is for the moment, and we'll change that later. Now we can drop the rest of the frames in, and I'll select all of them and create a nested sequence so that we can then manipulate them together. You can see that before we render, scrubbing is absolutely atrocious. That's kind of expected given how big our timeline is. But let's fix that and scale our nested clip down to 50%. Back in sequence settings, we'll scale down to 3840 by 2160 to give us our 4K 16x9 timeline. And now you can see the difference in our native photo aspect ratio of 3x2 compared to the 16x9 timeline. We can adjust the nested clip to fill the frame. And as I alluded to earlier, we will add keyframes to the start and end 
so that we have a slight zoom and some movement throughout the duration of the clip. And we'll end at the top of the frame because these clouds start to roll in toward the end and they're an interesting focus point. Scrubbing or playing the clip back at this point is still going to be choppy as hell, so let's give it a render so we can try to preview this before we export. The final clip is about 26 seconds. This render took 5 minutes and 30 seconds and the timeline is now pretty playable at half resolution, which is good to see. The last remaining task is now to crank through this export at the now native 4K 24 frames per second. And it's able to churn through that in 6 minutes and 24 seconds. Now I didn't get the M1 MacBook Air for creating heavier content like this, but despite the longer processing, it can get it done if you leave it to grind. I'll continue to use it for what I intended it to be for me, an incredibly mobile yet capable machine that can run my everyday apps and internet and could run Lightroom when needed on the go. I'll save the big catalog processing and the Premiere work for the beefy PC. I would bump up to the M1 Pro with 16 gigs of RAM if you need a Mac that can do more, but you'll obviously be spending more than $999.